Let's turn our attention now to the moves in the markets on this Tuesday. The markets look like they are bouncing back after Monday's sell-off on Wall Street. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange is firmer along with its global peers as investors mulled over the same global risks. The focus is now turning to this week's U.S. jobs report for direction. For more on these as well as other business-related stories, we're joined now by Michael Traherne, who is the portfolio manager at Vestec. Mr. Traherne, uh, good to have you on the daytime update. Now, how are the markets performing so far on this Tuesday? Good afternoon, Tommy. As you mentioned, uh, Monday was a terrible day for, for stocks. Um, it meant that our, our market opened up in the red this morning, but thankfully it uh, crossed the line into the green, and currently we're up 0.2%. Uh, Rand dollar rands are below that uh, psychological 15 to the dollar, currently at 14.97, and the price of gold slightly lower at 17.56. Uh, all signs pointing to a higher risk or risk on type of day in the markets. Now, South Africa IHS market PMI data increased to 50.70 points in September, and this is from 49.90 points in August of 2021. Talk us through this. Yes, I think firstly it's important to understand that uh, any reading above 50 means growth in uh, the manufacturing industry. Anything below 50 means uh, contraction. Uh, we haven't seen a figure above 50 since June. Uh, that makes sense. Obviously, July we had all the, the protests, and then August there was still fallout from that. Uh, so good to see we're back in positive territory, even though it's uh, small. Uh, it shows that uh, part of the growth comes from increased activity. Um, it is worth uh, pointing out that uh, some of the managers were uh, saying that global supply strains uh, held back their growth. They couldn't get stock required to produce things, and that's expected to, to last for the, end, for the rest of the year. Um, and then the strike that you're covering uh, at the moment will probably be a drag on uh, August PMI numbers, but uh, for September, positive, and that's good. How much of an impact really do strikes of this nature have? Um, when we're looking at uh, monthly data, it's obviously significant, but when you start looking at uh, uh, more longer-term data, uh, it's less significant. I think the main thing to consider is how long does the strike uh, go on for. If it's a couple of days, companies can generally uh, recoup the lost time. Um, but when you start getting into periods where it goes on for weeks or even months, uh, that's obviously very, very significant uh, and has a knock-on impact. So it all depends on how long the strike uh, takes. Now, we see BHP saying that in, in talks about buying into a copper project in the Democratic Republic of Congo, what is the potential significance of this deal, and what does this mean for BHP's current strategy? Uh, so at the moment, it's, it's a rumored deal. There's no official statement from any of the parties, as uh, would be expected, I suppose. Um, but it looks like that they're buying into one of the big copper mines in the DRC. It's a significant strategy shift from uh, Billiton. Uh, they sold out of their last African asset in 2019. It looks like they're coming back now. Uh, generally, BHP has been focused on the more developed nations where there's lower political risks and uh, easier operating environments. Um, but BHP has taken the view that copper is essential to the global economy going forward, particularly as uh, we move to more electronic cars, which are expected to need more copper. Um, that's, that would be the, the rationale for going into, into this higher risk uh, investment. Now, we see MTN Uganda announcing its intention to float 20% of its shares on the Uganda Securities Exchange. What is the significance of this move? Uh, so, increasing the number of shares in circulation uh, means that the share price moves a lot freer. It means more people get to buy in. Um, from MTN's perspective, it, it means they get more local buy-in uh, from, from users and, and investors. Uh, it also means that MTN gets to raise a bit of cash. Uh, Uganda is not a, a major region for them, but uh, we've seen this move uh, from other MTN divisions where they've listed the local businesses on the local exchanges, um, and that's to get locals more involved with the business. Um, MTN is obviously a major player in all the economies that they operate in, um, and they, wanna, they want consumers and investors to feel as if uh, MTN is part of the community, and this is one way of doing that. 
Now, here's a company that's uh, making moves and continues to make moves, a Time Bank. They've announced that they've entered into a strategic partnership with the Fushini Group. Take us through the structure of that deal and what each of the different companies gets to, uh, to benefit. Yes, so it looks like a quite an exciting deal. Uh, Fushini Group or TFG have said that from next year they're going to roll out six, uh, kios uh, 600 sorry, kiosks uh, specifically in their jet-owned stores uh, for, for Time Bank. Uh, obviously, for Time Bank, uh, increasing the number of kiosks is key for them to continue their growing their client base. And uh, a kiosk in a, in a store is a lot cheaper to run than if they had to open a branch. That's very beneficial for them. Um, from TFG's perspective, uh, they've said that these kiosks will offer increased financial products to their clients. Uh, one of the key things being uh, money transfers, and I think uh, what TFG is hoping here is that people will be going to TFG to, to make the money transfers and while they're there, they spend money. Um, but probably more likely that when people go into the stores to receive money that's been transferred to them, uh, they would spend a bit of it in the stores. So it looks like a win-win relationship and they're starting with 600 and then uh, I think they'll take it from there just depending on how well it goes. Do you have an idea of the number of stores that uh, the Foshini Group has or, or within their jet stores? Um, I'm not sure the number of jet stores we've had, but I think uh, Foshini Group has north of 2,000 stores, but uh, that's uh, very uh, it's out of memory, so I could be very, very wrong. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for that market update today on this uh, Tuesday afternoon. That's Michael Trohern. He is Portfolio Manager for Vestech.